Hey everybody, welcome to the second Ask Aaron of the week. Um, this one dealing with the most recent message I gave on uh, happy lives versus holy lives. If you missed that, you can watch it, hillcityhudson.org backslash media on the app or on Facebook or YouTube. I'm uh, going to jump in. We've got four questions here, all of them really good. Um, as always, these are my views, not the church's, and I hope that you uh, would, you know, continue this conversation in the comments section below or reach out if you have any questions or concerns. Um, I always say I hope the church agrees with me. I hope they do, um, but I like to be part of conversations and to have uh, things challenged and talked about. I think that's important for us as Christians. So with that said, uh, I'm going to jump in. Talked about the idea of uh, people living a happy life and feeling as though everything is good and great and why do I need God? I, I don't have any need for God because I feel happy. Um, but God is more concerned with our holiness than our happiness and uh, would encourage you to watch that message if, if you missed it or you're interested in that at all. First question, do I need to appear happy in a bad situation? So like if something bad is happening in my life, I find out somebody's sick, I find out um, I lost my job, I find out um, you know somebody I care about is in pain or suffering, do I need to appear happy? No, absolutely not. Uh, God is big enough to handle your authenticity, your anger, your hurt, your suffering. Uh, God knows that those things are occurring and wants to walk with them through, uh, walk with you through them. And uh, I think it's important that as Christians we demonstrate um, that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to, to struggle and hurt and, and be in pain and that we walk with each other through that, that we believe that God cares about us and walks with us through that. And so I think it's really important that we demonstrate that sometimes we're not okay and we're struggling. Um, but I do think that in a weird way, even when we're struggling and even when we're not okay, we as Christians can find an underlying or overall sense of joy or peace or contentment in the knowledge that we will someday uh, be in a place where it is all okay and it will all be good and happiness will reign supreme. And so it's kind of a weird uh, thing to think about but I always talk about, you know, going to a funeral and uh, having it be a celebration and to be filled with joy because, yeah, the person, uh, if they love Jesus, is no longer there, but they're in heaven uh, or, or awaiting heaven. Uh, there's some theology for you there, but they, they're awaiting um, spending eternity in perfection and they're no longer in pain and they're no longer suffering and they're no longer going through the things of this world. So we are not okay, right? We miss them. We have a longing uh, for what was and what will be, um, but they they're they're good, and so um, you know it's it's this weird idea that you can be not okay in the moment and still be okay in an overall sense because you understand in totality uh, what the gospel means and what it represents, and that is that we will someday spend eternity with the God who loves us and created us in the perfection that we were designed for. Okay, uh, next question, asked by a true mathematician, not really, is happiness a factor or a product? Uh, I believe it's both, uh, in the sense that happiness can be a factor in how you uh, choose to live your life, what the outlook of your life is, um, how you... Uh, operate on a day-to-day -day basis, but it really is true joy, peace, contentment is a product of um, finding those things in a relationship with Jesus, finding those things in um, what true joy, peace, and contentment are and look like, right? In the knowledge that we are loved, we are cared for, uh, we are held in the hand of God who created us and designed us and, and believes um, that, that we will, you know, be able to accomplish the things that he has set out for us to do. And so even in the days um, when it doesn't feel like that, uh, happiness can be a product of that knowledge. Happiness can be a product of 
uh, our relationship with someone who is bigger than all the junk of this world, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, he is able to um, redirect our focus. And so happiness in that way becomes a product of what we set our, our mind on and where our heart is focused and where our hope is found. And so it can be both, um, but I think the way that the question was asked, it is more of a product, right? It's a product of finding true happiness in the right place. Uh, next question, should other people's suffering make me happy? Like a team losing or an enemy, uh, you know, struggling or like being in a war when the, the bad guy loses, should that make me happy? Should other people's suffering make me happy? And and the short answer is no, right? Like you you shouldn't find joy in other people's pain. You shouldn't um, rejoice when other people suffer. You should want and desire what's best for them. Jesus is really clear. Love your neighbor as yourself. Treat other people the way you desire to be treated. Love them the way that God loves you. And God is for us. And God wants us to um, live out the life that he has called us to. He wants us to be holy and righteous. And so even if you have an enemy, you shouldn't want them to struggle. You should pray that they would find, um, you know, Jesus, that they should find a relationship with him and have their heart changed and their life altered. And that, um, you know, you would be able to restore and renew that relationship and that things would work out uh, well for both of you. So no, you shouldn't be looking for um, other people to suffer. Now, the question I think comes from uh, a place of I want other people to face judgment when uh, they're against me. If I do the right thing and they do the wrong thing and they seem to prevail in that moment, I want justice. And I think you shouldn't find happiness in their suffering, but you can find contentment or rest in the knowledge that God is just and that ultimately uh, people will get what they are due uh, from God because of their uh, decisions and their actions and their choice, unless it's, you know, uh, a Christian and we, grace means getting what we don't deserve, right? So unless we give ourselves to Jesus and we are, um, made clean and pure and, and, and have that relationship with him or, and are made right with God, we all deserve to suffer and we all deserve to get what's coming to us. And so only through that grace uh, are we saved from that justice, that thing that we uh, deserve. And so, you know, you no, know, you shouldn't be hoping that people get theirs from God. You should be hoping and praying and, and striving to make sure that they receive the same grace and forgiveness that you and I are. Um, but if they deny that and they walk away from it, then I think it is at least okay to rest in the knowledge that God is the ultimate judge and that he is just. And I think that, that means something and gives us as human beings, fallen sinful human beings, uh, some peace of mind. Last question. On Sunday, you said that you can have a happy life and not have a Jesus following one. Is that really true? And is there a difference between worldly happiness and Jesus following happiness? And I am so happy you asked the question because yes, you caught on to the nuance of uh, the message. Really happy, really joyful, really content means living a life with Jesus and finding joy, peace, uh, hope, happiness in something that is so much less trivial than the things that make us happy in this world, right? Than the happiness we get from power or uh, fame or money or stuff. Um, but there are people who experience a temporal happiness, right? They've got all the money in the world. They've got all the power in the world, all the influence in the world. And they feel happy because they've never actually experienced what true joy, peace, contentment, happiness is. And so they feel happy. And so the whole 
point of the message was to say, you could have walked through the doors of the church this morning feeling as though you were happy. Everything's going well. You've got it all together. But if your life is not being lived in a Jesus-serving way, you don't really have a clue what true happiness is, right? There's, there's temporal happiness and eternal happiness. There's resting in the knowledge that you are okay and secure forever and always, amen. And then there's just knowing that, well, I got what I need for right now, or I've got a lot right now, or I've got more than most people right now. But there is still a day coming when you'll pass on and you won't be able to take it with you. And will you be good in that moment? And the fear and the anxiety and the dread that comes from that um, does undo earthly happiness. So the answer to your question is thank you for going to a second level. Uh, no, I, I don't think it's possible to be experiencing the joy or the happiness that people who have a relationship with Jesus experience on an earthly level. You can feel happy. You can be happy for a while or in a different way. I like just making air quotes. Uh, you can be happy in a different way, but you will be missing out on what true happiness really is if you're not living a Jesus-following life. So, those are great questions. Uh, we are gearing up for Holy Week here, people. If you're watching, Ask Aaron. I hope you've liked uh, Hill City social media pages for the entire week of Holy Week. I will be putting out daily devotionals uh, every morning, and I hope that um, you guys will read those and engage with them, interact, have conversations around them. Um, so every every morning, Sunday to Sunday, there's going to be uh, a devotional posted on on my personal page and on the Hill City page. So I uh, would love to have you do that. We're having church on Palm Sunday and Easter. We're having a special Good Friday service at 7 p.m. So make sure you put all that stuff on your calendar. This is a great time to be a part of a church community. Hillcityhudson.org backslash media for all of the online stuff. Or you can watch it on our app, YouTube, Facebook channels as well. Thanks for being a part of uh, our online community. And as always, thanks for asking Aaron. Have a good week.